join me today as I share how I made this double-sided battle mat and the lessons that I learned along the way. This mat is super cheap, really easy to make and doesn't take too long either. And of course, the mat can roll up as any good mat should. The main material I'm using here is unbleached plain calico. Now this stuff is similar to canvas, but it's much thinner and much, much cheaper. I got about five meters of this for I think it was $15. So what I start out by doing is measuring a right angle because it has been cut several times and I don't have a real straight line on the edge anymore. So I measure a right angle and from that edge corner, I measure out four foot in either direction and create a four foot sheet of the calico. Making sure to leave some excess on the outside, that way you can use some masking tape to stick it down to the table. Or if you wished, you could wrap it around a piece of plywood and staple it down and that'll keep it real straight. I found when using tape to hold it down to make sure it's as flat as you can get it, just slowly work your way around each of the edges, pulling it up and laying it back down and pulling a lot of tension on it. And that gets it nice and flat. I then get the staple product, the acrylic gap filler or caulking, and I just squeeze this all out into a little container. I then mix in some brown paint and some sand and even some tea leaves just to give it some texture. You don't want to add too much paint or grout, otherwise it'll be harder for you to spread it. So I'd go with maybe just enough paint to tint it the color you want, maybe even a bit lighter than you want because the corking is white. You can go over with a wash to darken it down later. For the sand, I don't really do an exact measurement. I just give it a rough sprinkling and you don't need a lot of sand here. The finer grain sand, a little goes a really long way with this. Once that's all at a nice consistency, I'm just gonna use a plastic scraper to scrape it along all of the calico. And as you can see here, I do go through and adjust the tape very often and pull it because I didn't put it completely flat down the first time. I also 3D printed these texture rollers. These are meant for cobblestones, but they look like cracked earth as well. So I just spray some isopropyl alcohol on the plastic rollers and then roll a few in random spots all around different pieces of the corking. And this comes out really cool. You just need to blend some of the textures around the edges to make it look more natural. And you could do this with a finger or a paintbrush. And as you can see in the time lapse, in some of the areas I come through with a roller brush. Again, I just spray some isopropyl alcohol on that so it doesn't get all gooped up with the acrylic. And that smooths the transition nicely and adds some cool texture. Again, as I spoke about earlier, I did make this a little bit lighter than I did intend. And you can even see in some parts I've come through with a bit more just white caulking to cover some empty spots. So what I'm going to do is cover the entire thing in a dark brown wash. This is just acrylic paint and water, and that's all you need to make a nice looking wash. And you can see the difference between a normal version and then a version with the wash covering it. And that brings out all the texture really nice. Once that is all coated, I then grab some tile grout 
this is the color that I'm using and just throw it along the entire thing. The wash is still a little bit wet here. So wherever it lands, it's going to stick in and sign it kind of set into that water of the wash. Now, of course, it doesn't look too great now. So I'm just going to grab my dry brush and in circular motions, just kind of work it into the ground. And this gives it a different color, different texture in some of the areas and adds almost like a highlight color. Now, while you could leave it there, I'm going to go and add some grass to it as well. I'm going to use Mod Podge here instead of PVA because Mod Podge tends to be a little bit more flexible. And with PVA, it will work perfectly fine, but Mod Podge will just be a little bit better at surviving getting rolled up all the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put very thin layers of Mod Podge in all the spots where I want grass to settle. I'll then sprinkle over my sawdust flock which is just yellow dark green and light green flock made from sawdust you can use whatever flocking materials you like you can see here because i put such a thin layer of mod podge down it dries really quick and it absorbs into that wooden sawdust very very fast so what I can do is then just rub off all of the top layer and this leaves with just like how we did with the grout, just a tinting almost of green. And this has the illusion and the implication of there being grass here, but you can still place buildings and everything on top of it without having a bunch of flock in the way. It also makes the flock go a bit longer. And then once all of the Mod Podge has properly dried, I mix together a beige out of a yellow, white, and brown paint. And then I'm gonna dry brush this over everything, even the grass. And this will tie everything together because you can't really see it too much on camera, but the green really stands out way too much for my liking. So just going around the edges of the green with some of this beige sort of tone it's just going to tie everything in together a bit more and make it look more cohesive. And here you can see how it looks just testing it out with some of my terrain. I really like the dry brush. It brings out the texture really nice. You can see in one spot there, I tried to use a brown wash to tone down the green, but that didn't end up working too well. So the dry brush was definitely the way to go. And satisfying pulling all of the tape off. There'll be some parts perhaps where the acrylic leaked under the tape. That's no worries. Just let it cure and you can cut that off fine and it rolls up really well. So it's time to get started on the second side. Something I will immediately recommend for the second side is that you do the second side as your simplest side. So for me, what I should have done is that dirty outdoors area as my second side, because you'll see soon that Whatever you put on the second side, it will have a significant impact on the texture of the first side. So if you put something like I'm about to do that is very square, it doesn't end up looking great on the opposite side. However, it's not too much of an issue if you do end up with that. I'll explain more as we go on. But for now, I'm just going to tape up so that way... Whatever I'm putting on this side matches the exact same as the other side. And it's pretty close to the lines that I marked out earlier. I then start drawing out the layout of my roadways. 
I want several different areas that look pretty unique between each other, but all tie into a central theme, something along an industrial sort of area or shipping receiving sort of area. I start off with the only side that will be using caulking. I have one bottle left, so I thought I might as well use it up. And this also saves doing just too much EVA foam texturing. So I'm going to have this little area in the corner be just full concrete tiles. So I just mark out with the masking tape to cover any of the edges that I don't want to be covered, of course. And then I'm going to fill that with caulking and this cork I've tinted gray just using some black paint and sprinkled in some sand as well. To get a nice smooth texture, it's just about slowly working your way through. And then in order to add the texture of the concrete tiles, I'm just going to use this square ruler and impress it into the cork. This can leave a little bit coming out and coming up and looking real messy along the top, not like smooth sort of uh, joins where the tiles meet up. So what you can do is once it's dry, just go with a slow grit sandpaper and just get rid of the top layer of anything that is sticking up. You still maintain most of that texture, but you get rid of all of the lumps that have been pulled up. A lot of these ideas for the sci-fi side come from Narbs Makes who makes a very popular YouTube video going over how to make a sci-fi board like this. And I really like the way that he used the drywall tape for the roads. And I think that looks really cool. So I'm going to go ahead and yoink that and twist it a bit to be my own. So I just slide down a bunch of drywall tape on all of the roadway areas. And then I grab a bunch of EVA foam and texture it up to look like a bunch of different things. I've got here a bunch of two by two centimeter tiles that I'm just gonna stick on with some contact adhesive. I texture all of these off camera sitting at my desk because it goes through a lot of them and sitting over this table would have been such a pain to do for such a long time. You can feel pretty safe to cut along and score into the calico because of that acrylic that you put on the back side it is very strong and even without it it is still quite strong and isn't going to cut from just a light abrasion. Make sure to let your contact adhesive dry fully before sticking them two together or you could even use hot glue. When it's all stuck on, I just use an empty corking bottle just to roll it over and make it nice and flat. I add some of the off cuts to this section here and then just start haphazardly placing down some tiles and metal plating. My idea for this area is some sort of old ruined factory. When working with the contact adhesive, I found it useful to glue down a couple of pieces, wait for the glue to dry and go work on a separate area and then come back and stick those down and kind of alternate between the areas that I'm working on. And you can see once that's all dry, I've got some tiles here, I've got some of that grating and even some wires, which is just some really thin pieces of EVA foam. Just sitting there and making sure it looks good with some 3D printed terrain as well. Now to move on to the last section. I found when you didn't really have an idea, try to find one motif that you can stick to. And for me, it was these red beams here. And that kind of informed how I would lay down all of the other pieces. I then go in with a screwdriver head and just screw in some rivet marks in the corners of all the metal sheets. Once I'm happy with that, I just come in with the heat gun and blast it all. 
This will bring out all of the textures that we've carved into the EVA foam and make it stand out really bold. Also, some of the foam starts peeling up in corners where I missed some contact adhesive. It's perfectly easy just to go through with some hot glue and reseal it. I also go through and add some sand detail just using some Mod Podge to bind it down. And this is good just to add even another layer of detail. Once all of that is dry, I give it all a coat of a black Mod Podge mixture. If I was smart here, I would use a white Mod Podge mixture because I want to have a lot of vibrant colours on here. So it does mean the colours don't go on too easy. However, once we do go over with the washes, all the paints come out nice anyway. And here you can see I meticulously go through and pick out all of the tiles. And I've got a lot of tile details here. Now, you don't need to do 100% coverage. Not even at all, because they are going to become ruined once we go through with a black-brown wash anyway. So you only need the hint of colour just to make it stand out from the tile next to it. Especially with the white and black tiles, you don't need to go for 100% coverage. And now you can see my camera died in the meantime, but I've painted the other tiles in a blue and a red sort of colors, and I painted all the roads in an orange. And I want the roads to kind of look like the Kill Team box art, the color of Kill Team, which is like that grimy orange color, which I really like. And with a lot of these colors, there is no one color that I'm using. I'm mixing together a group of colors to get a tone that I'm happy with. And because I'm going over black, what I'm doing is I'm mixing a little bit of white into all of my paints to make them a bit more opaque and go on a bit better. And here you can see how I've not really done 100% coverage. But then I've gone over with a silver dry brush and it's kind of moved everything towards the same sort of color. And then when I go over with a wash again, that's going to cover it up even more. Here I've just 2D printed out some industrial stencils I found online and stippled them onto random areas, making sure to get the recommended amount of hazard stripes. I found when doing this, if you just focus the power of the stippling onto the stencil piece, it will come out with much clearer and sharper lines. It's hard to explain, but here I'll show you it live in action. I also do some road markings, just using some masking tape for the longer areas. And then once that is all done, we're going to go through and give it a coat of a real dark brown wash. Black, brown, water, that's all you need. And cover the entire thing. This will hide any mistakes in the painting and make it look real grim dark. If at any point you have a bit too much, just feel free to stipple on with a piece of paper towel and just take a bit of the excess off. You don't really want to soak it, you just want to tint it. Once that is all dry, it's time to take off all the tape and cut all of the excess edges. You can see here, the camera picks it up really well, much better than in real life, the square lines, markings on the opposite side. This has come about because the EVA foam, when it was put on with the contact cement, has kind of shrunken. So it is pulled up and made tight shapes on the opposite side. As it sits here, it kind of goes away. That texture it's been a couple days now and it's looking much better much less egregious than this does i've even put some books on there to flatten it out uh, but if you wanted to avoid this entirely 
what I would suggest is doing the complex side first and doing a simple side on the back. Or, of course, if you're doing two simple sides with just like outdoors or different sort of outdoor ground sort of textures, where you're just using the acrylic corking, you will not run into this issue at all. But still, even with this problem, in quotation marks, on mine, it's still looking really good. And especially once you put some terrain on it, you can barely notice. And I am super happy with how these came out. Finally, a good mat to put my graveyard board that I've been building over the past couple of weeks on. And I'm really happy with how this has all came out. I might have made it a bit darker, but of course, once I've put the brown paint into the cork, it ended up becoming much lighter. So you might end up with a lighter result than you originally intend. And I'd recommend going through with a couple more washes if that's the case. And you can see from my industrial board, I have nowhere near as much sci-fi or grimdark terrain. I only have a few 3D printed pieces. And you can see the kind of motif of the checkerboard pattern follows onto those pieces as well. So I think I need some more sci-fi grimdark terrain. But I think that might be for another week. For now, I'm pretty happy with how all of this has come out. And it really looks like a terrible old grimdark, it's kind of hive city sort of vibe. Just in time for Dark Tide to release. You can see here with these tiles in some areas, because the EVA foam isn't a really large sheet, it does have those parts where the textures meet. It doesn't look too bad if you're sitting far back, but once you examine it, you can kind of see it looks a bit janky. Some areas as well have a bit of lumps in them because I didn't fully stretch out the calico enough. But I mean, once you put some terrain on it, you can hide those real easy. And again, if I were to do this again, I'd probably staple the calico down to a sheet of plywood and then flip it over and staple it down again. But that's all for now. And I'll see you next week with something different. Thank you for watching.